So Warner, I want to get an idea of how your traffic is at Mobile World Congress and also learn a little bit about the new product announcement that you made. So great foot traffic <clears throat> and uh, a number of really high caliber meetings. So I think all around it's been, uh, you know, it's, been, it's been a worthwhile investment and it's been great to be here. And then Selfie Quattro 4000, right? It is, yes. Tell me a little bit more about it. So our new product, uh, the last, uh, not the last, but the latest in the, new, in the family of Quattro, Quattro 1, Quattro 2, Quattro 3000, and 4000. Typically, uh, you know, people like to ask us the question about, is this primarily a multi-carrier or a multi-mobile network operator product? And yes, it is. It's a highly integrated mobile, multi-mobile network operator product, <clears throat> but it's much more than that. It sort of is in line with uh, our objective to create scalability in our own business model, in the business model of our integrators, and then also in the class of technology. So the product is scalable, however it enables scalability of service to our integrators, and it, it really uh, drives scalability within our own business models. And you also now are supporting TDD, so I was hoping you could contextualize that for me. Why is that significant? Well, it's, it's kind of, um, it's, it's significant and it's really just part, an extended part of where things are going, right? It has bearing on Sprint in the United States, very specifically Band 41, as you know. Obviously, it's a very competent and efficient data carrier. Um, but internationally, as you know, we have a very large international uh, customer base and, of course, Asia and now even more recently, Australia and, uh, and the UK or, or Europe are sort of asking more and more TDD type questions and the type of support. So really the significance for us is Quattro 2000 supports TDD, but the level at which we support TDD now in Quattro 4000 is far more significant, leading to a much more efficient outcome. So you've got 4000, you've got a four carrier solution. What does that mean for 1000 and 2000? Do those continue on? Yeah, superb question. 1000 and 2000 will live on indefinitely. Internationally, 1000 is still the mainstay of the international effort because most of that is in deregulated markets. Those dictate uh, carrier involvement and carrier approval. So that most of those installs tend to be single carrier. The ones that tend to be multi-carrier um, will install multiple Quattro 1000s and that enables us to circumvent any of the regulatory and other types of circumstances. Um, from a Quattro 2000 point of view, Cost becomes a really important thing for Quattro 2000, coupled with the fact that if really you're only required to provide AT&T and Verizon, then cost efficiency will prevail, and at the end of the day, uh, the Quattro 2000 will do the job, and there necessarily won't be a need to, to go to Quattro 4000. And now, I've heard you and some of your colleagues use this term multi-carrier supercell. I was hoping you could delineate for me exactly what that means. So supercell for us really is is utilizing a local signal, a small cell, and making that capacity that is brought to the venue by that small cell uniformly available to the entire rest of the building, as opposed to still being rather spotted uh, from a small cell point of view, simply because the small cell doesn't have the coverage footprint. So to be able to uniformly cover a venue, you need more than one small cell. And if you're going to use many small cells, it, it, it raises the question of, of interference. And so a cleaner, more predictable, efficient and uh, cost efficient outcome would be to use our product aligned with or in partner with a small cell, coupled to a small cell rather than off air to drive the coverage um, and make use of the enhanced capacity. And I know you guys are never resting on your laurels and continue to push, so what's the outlook for 5G? <laughs> the, the outlook is, um, is inevitability, I guess, right? Um, we're a pragmatic company. We chase where there are projects and where there's revenue. So one of our challenges with any emerging technology like 5G is timing it, uh, timing it from a revenue point of view. We're most interested in sub, sub six gigahertz. We're not that hyper-focused on millimeter wave right now. Having said that, time will dictate how prices decrease for components, what the use cases and the applicability of these certain technologies on certain venues. So our first entree will be in the next couple of years and it will address the sort of sub six gig interest and we'll, we'll go from there.
Well, Werner, congratulations on the product launch and thank you for taking the time to bring me up to speed. Thank you.